For governments to face out fossil fuels, it is important for them to look inwards and look at the Paris Agreement to make sure that um, the 1.5 target is reached. And this can only be done when we are able to come up with initiatives that will support renewable energy transition. I think we, it is arguable to say that it is cheaper to transition to renewables with the mere fact that there is abundant access to renewable supply in developing countries in which I actually came from. You realize there is enough sunlight, there is enough solar energy. Then transition into that becomes cheaper compared to fossil fuel um, subsidies that are given because it will actually lead to stranded assets one, but also the technology that requires, it requires to move to fos either fossil gas or oil or so on, becomes more expensive. So uh, the affordability component is another constraint that we're thinking about. Can poor pleasant farmers or people with living within third world countries get access to that? We have seen in countries where you find it difficult for people to buy gas. This is simply because of the cost attached to it. So we believe that shifting to that, governments thinking about how do they invest in renewables actually becomes a solution because it's a one-time expenditure that will eradicate all forms of poverty and so on, and it is more sustainable. Yeah, I think generally um, there are a lot of subsidies that the countries and governments are actually going in for that they need to look at as far as climate change is concerned. We have seen governments going in for fertilizer subsidies. We have seen governments going in for other um, projects that will actually worsen the climate situation. Call it the carbon capture, carbon storage and so on, carbon credit and so on. We are they thinking, of, thinking about how do they make sure that the emitters continue emitting more. But the reality is we need to think about a solution that will address the issue of climate change, not to come up with false solutions that will somehow address the situation when in reality we know that that's going to be a bit challenging. So one, I think one of the things that the governments need to think about is let them draw back to the people that they're serving. And we tell this to the IMF, we told this thing to the World Bank, that they need not to focus on the interests of the clients that they're dealing with, because those clients are also dealing with people that put them into power and authority. So based on that, the plight of those individuals, because the disasters that we're talking about, the earthquakes, the floods and so on, who is affected? Are those people having the chance to make decisions in those spaces? in terms of decision-making processes. We have seen in Pakistan recently, the disaster that happened, how many million of people are affected? And those individuals, who is actually going to pay for those subsidies? Who is going to pay for those debts? Is the ordinary people who are not taking part in those decision-making processes. And we believe these are things that needs to be considered. And we have talked about the fertilizer issue, that it is a need for urgent action to move to organic fertilizers, not NPKs. But we have seen subsidies being given to governments to expand on that. We have seen the LNG expansions also happening in the name of just transition. How clear can this be to ordinary individuals within society? Do they have a say in what is decided on their behalf? The answer is no. But we have seen MDBs, IFIs continuing to fund and support through subsidies to countries in coming up with projects that are not going to help us in the fight against climate change and they are not going to help us in the fight to reach the 1.5 target. And just to add on, the NDCs per se, we can say if the evolution roadmap is somehow attached to that, how convinced are we that we are going to reach the 1.5 target in the soonest possible time.
coalition building is important in any campaign that we're working on because it's important for people to understand that in order to push back there is a need for you to be able to mobilize and the mobilization social mobilization in this aspect can only be done if people share a public narrative and the public narrative is right now fossil gas is not the solution we need to shift to renewables how do we do that people have their individual stories and these stories are based on their experiences and the impact of climate change in their lives how do we transition the best way to do it is to make sure that people are aware of the catastrophic effect of climate change the impact of the decisions that are made on their behalf once we are able to do that we were able to mobilize voices and this was somehow simple and easy because people felt the need to act now the urgency is there that is why in the gambia when we working on the parliamentary call on ending fossil fuel getting the signatures it was a need and we were able to do that because people felt that it is the solution towards moving to renewables because it is multifaceted and multidimensional as i always say we cannot use a single approach to get what we want to get we might make the big noises we might do all the campaign events but there is also a need to have a direct engagement with authorities people who make decisions people who make laws because we feel that in order for us to achieve or influence the development of the ndcs at country level there is a need for parliamentarians to be part of the process for lawmakers to be part of the process for ministers and cabinet officials to be part of the process because we feel that these are the people that represent our voices and these are the people that can make effect social change that we all desire For countries to ensure that phasing out fossil fuel does not impact vulnerable communities and indigenous people, to some extent it is simple. We just need to build a connection with the people that we work with. There should be a process of just transition, and the just transition is looking at coming up with alternative opportunities, so that when you are phasing out, there is a solution. and this can be attained through local people's knowledge this is the time for people to understand that decisions cannot be made by people who are up there without consulting the grassroots once we are able to engage the grassroots we tend to organize and have an insight of how do they how is their resilient mechanism how do they cope with the climate crisis and how do they make so how can they come up with alternative solutions to address their situations if not anything that we decide for them become a, becomes alien and we have seen the jet peace at some point lng expansions at some point brought in as a transition how much involve our communities how much information do they get to in that it becomes challenging so that means for us to transition there is a need for connection to be built within to make sure that the grassroots and people who are affected are in the center of the process in terms of decision making and planning for sustainability purpose the recommendation that i have for anyone who is in the verge of pushing back on fossil fuel expansions and mdb and ifi funding of fossil fuels especially fossil gas there is a nine, there is a need an urgent need for a coalition there is an urgent need for regrouping and there is an urgent need for strong coordination we need to coordinate ourselves we need to come up with better strategies to make sure that we are listened to and we are able to make the biggest noise to make sure that those making the decisions including the world bank and the imf actually listen to the people not only their benefit, not only their um clients but the people that they serve and these are taxpayers so based on that if you are a campaigner 
you are a researcher. We need to put our house in order. We need to regroup. We need to reorganize ourselves in the bigger push out to live for, from the fossil fuel expansions and the giants. The reason why just transition is important is we have these two phases, phrases, just to transition or just transition. We're not looking for just to transition, we are just move from fossil fuels to renewables, but we want the process to be just. Just in a sense that people are put in the center of the discussions. People are given the alternative opportunities, alternative solutions that address their needs, but not just to transition to something else. That means in terms of planning, in terms of decision making, in terms of involvement in the process, there is always inclusion at all angles to make sure that when people do not lose this other one, we don't get in the order. We have seen in the LNG expansions, we have seen in other false solutions, we are, we are thinking about just transition, some are even categorizing fossil gas as a, as a just transition mechanism. How do you link that to climate change? The reality is false. It is not. So the solution is, the answer to that is, we need to come up with a mechanism. In the just transition process, we make sure that vulnerable communities, developing countries, are able to transition over time, whilst developed nations do the transition as soon as possible. But in addition to that, how do we make sure that the process is not forced upon the people that are actually the recipient of the transition? but instead they are part of the process. Well, I think building a public narrative is easy because we all live in communities, we all live in countries, and every country has its local reality. And public narratives are built on local realities. It's not something that should be alien to people. And the hard fact is, you go to most developing countries, we always say this in Africa, do we need gas as a transition? How many, country, how many countries actually use gas compared to if we had access to wind power, if we have access to, sun, uh, to solar energy? Because solar is abundant. So the sun is abundant in Africa. So that's the reality. So at the end of the day, it comes back to what do people need? And it's very easy for communities to understand that because they have lived their entire life within that ecosystem. So the reality is building the public narrative is easy as long as the decent makers are willing to listen to the voices of the vulnerable population.